Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sebelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. If you own PowerDirector version 18 or earlier, you may be wondering what has changed and if you should upgrade to version 19, which was just released. In this video, I'll answer both questions. I'm also going to talk about whether you should use Ultra, Ultimate, or 365. Every time a new version of a program comes out, we all wonder if it's worth the cost to upgrade. What's changed? What new features have been added? I'm going to walk through several of the new features in PowerDirector 19 and introduce you to what's new from version 18. By the way, if you want to buy PowerDirector 19, use the link in the description below. When you do, you make it possible for me to make more tutorials for you. Now before I go on, let's talk about system requirements. I have the system requirements on screen now. Before you buy, make sure your computer is up to the task. Remember, this is a Windows-only program. Here are some key updates that come with PowerDirector 19. The first change I'll point out is a minor change to the layout of the screen. One thing I actually like about PowerDirector is they don't screw around with the layout from version to version where you have to completely relearn the interface. But they did make a minor tweak here, and I think it's a good change. If you notice, you don't have something here that you used to have. You no longer have a titles row, and a music row, and a narration row, and an effects row, along with your rows 1, 2, and 3. They've taken all those out, and now you've just got your functional rows. You don't need a separate track for narration or music or anything like that. You can put those things on any of these rows that you want. And if you really want, you can label them here uh, if that helps you identify where they are. Uh, as far as effects, if you need an effects track, you can hit Add Tracks. And you got an effect track here. You can put that wherever you want. So all in all, they just made this a little bit cleaner interface to use, and uh, I think I like that change. You're familiar with the motion tracker where you can assign text and graphics and effects to the moving object. Well, now in PowerDirector, you can change the font and colors and that sort of thing on the text that you assign as well. You can see I'm changing the font size. I'll make it bold, put a different color on there, move it around a little bit on screen once I've got it formatted the way I wanted it. Now when we play it back you'll see the revised text following along with the drone. We also can assign picture-in-picture -picture objects with the uh, motion tracker as well. Go back into the motion tracker, pick an image. Now we can choose picture-in-picture -picture images from the video overlay room. I'll scroll down and pull the box here. Click on the box and hit OK. Now all I have to do is drag it over the drone so it, a fly, it appears over the drone. We run it back and watch it and there it is so you can see you can do more with the motion tracking graphic in version 19. a new feature in PowerDirector 19 that i really like is uh, the addition of motion graphics in the titling room i'll show you how that works i'm here in the titling room now if you come down, there's a new category called Motion Graphics, and these are moving titles that have more than just backgrounds and borders as we did before. These have graphics in them, and I'll pick one of those here, and you can see that it's actually got triangles built in there and a line underneath, as well as the text, and that moves, so you've got the Motion Graphics. So let's drag this one down on the line, and if I hit Play, and see it on the screen there. Now if I double click on it, 
you can see that obviously I can change the, the text in here if I want, change the top line of text. I can make it, uh, uh, it's by, this one is by default italicized. I can turn that off. I can make it non-bold. I could change the color if I want. Uh, but I can also change the color of the graphics. So if I didn't like that purple, I could make it bright, uh, a bright red. And I could make the second one, which is the other triangle and the line beneath it, a green. So now you can see I've changed the colors and uh, you know to make it look like I want. Obviously, I can still do things like rotate it. I can put it sideways. I can make it a sideways graphic if I wanted. I hit OK and hit play. And now you see the graphic is moving uh, as a uh, more ornamental title than what we originally were allowed to do in PowerDirector. So this is a real nice feature in PowerDirector 19. As an existing PowerDirector user, you're probably familiar with the Color Match tool where you select a couple of clips and hit Color Match and it brings them up here and by running it through this tool, you match the color tones of your reference image uh, with the target image. You make this one adjust to match the color tones of the uh, reference image. And before it was a pretty simple program, you'd hit Match Color and essentially you can choose the level of uh, change that, that this does. So if you, you hit, drag it all the way up, it you know makes a big change and you can tone that down if it, the change is a little bit too dramatic for you. Well, in version 19, they've added some more features uh, with this. You can also get in and mess with the, the hue of the image. You can change the saturation the amount of saturation of the colors in, in the image, and you can change the brightness too. So they've taken a, a pretty decent tool here for kind of color leveling your, your uh, different video or image clips in your video, uh, and they've given you some more tools to make it even more powerful. Cyberlink has also improved the mask designer, which is a, it was already a pretty powerful function within the program, and they've made it just a little bit better. The uh, nice thing that they've added is the ability to draw your own mask on an image. So I've got, a, a in this case, a still image here. I'm going to cut myself out of this image here. I'll look into tools and mask designer. And you still have all the mask shapes that we had before that you could assign to this uh, graphic. But instead, I'm actually going to use this new icon here to create a custom selection mat mask. And when I click on that, now you can see it's all darkened. So basically, the whole image is masked out. But I'm going to draw a line around my body here. Now, obviously, I drew that very quickly here for demonstration purposes, but you can see I've got all these little nodes all around my uh, body on the screen here, and now this is, you can see it fully illuminated, so clear this part of the image is, is, a vi is visible and the rest of this image is masked out. So if I hit OK, and you can see the, that that's cut out. Now, the first thing you notice is that I cut off the top of my head, so let's go back into the Mask Designer. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I can come back in here, and I can add more nodes, and I can drag them up to get the top of my head in there. So if you do make mistakes, like if I wanted to get rid of these little blue gaps in the sky or get rid of these things that shouldn't have been part of there, I could just adjust the nodes on my mask or even add more nodes and get those all cleaned out. Drag this down to get more of my legs in there. Something else I can do that's pretty cool 
is I can add another mask here. So I'm going to click on this and now I'm going to start drawing nodes around this landing pad. Okay, now you can see that I'm cut out and the landing pad is cut out. I hit OK and now you can see both. And if I wanted to drag another clip over behind that, now you can see what the effect is. I can move the, uh, my, the clip around, I can resize it, make it do whatever I want, I rotate it, do whatever I want with it. But that's a pretty powerful addition to the mask uh, designer in PowerDirector now with version 19. And I can see some real fun uses for that. For example, if I had some drone video uh, actually shot with a drone and I had a photograph of the interior of a cockpit and I could cut out the windows of the cockpit and overlay it on top of the video and look like you were flying in a plane instead of flying a drone. That's just one example I'm making up here. But you can see that there's a lot of different uses you can have for this feature. So I think that's a pretty cool addition. Cyberlink has also updated the picture-in-picture -picture designer with version 19 and I've set up a picture-in-picture -picture effect to kind of show you what it has been doing and what we now can do with it. You can see I've got two sets of keyframes here and as I move forward the image slides into a, a, a smaller shape in the corner of the image. So that's what we could do previously. They have now created uh, a different type of keyframe. So if I right click on this, I've got a choice between linear and hold. And by default, it goes with linear. But if I change this to hold, and I'll do the same thing with this one, hold. Now, what's going to happen is that over this period between the two keyframes, it's going to stay exactly as it is. Then when it gets to this one, the second set of keyframes, it will jump to the new uh, position and scale. Watch. and it jumps. So the addition here is the linear versus hold uh, settings for the keyframes. Now we could accomplish something like that pretty similarly but we'd have to go in and we do a third set of uh, keyframes in here and just have it jump or or just drag those over there real close or, or, or do something like that. This makes it really easy to create that kind of effect in PowerDirector and so that's a nice addition to the picture-in-picture -picture designer. With version 19 of PowerDirector you now have a built-in screen recorder, an updated screen recorder. Uh, Cyberlink had a version of a screen recorder before but this is version 4.0 uh, special edition and it's as easy as going to your plugins menu and choosing it. Screen recorder. And now you have a built-in screen recorder that you can record full screen games. You can lock it to an application. You can draw custom shapes or assign it to a device. Change your resolution of frame rate and set to a webcam and, and choose whether you're recording. So there's a whole bunch of different settings you can do with your screen recorder. You get done recording and it dumps it right into power director for you to use. So this is a pretty cool thing. I can't actually demonstrate it because I'm using a screen recorder right now to record this, but this is a pretty nice feature to have. A lot of video editors don't give you this capability. Some of the other changes in PowerDirector 19 include more creative transition effects added, pro camera format support, sketch animation, Intel low power encoder support, and more. So that's the answer to your first question. What's new? Now, is it worth upgrading from an earlier version? Well, here's what I think. If your version of PowerDirector is 17 or below, it's time to upgrade assuming that your computer meets the minimum requirements for the new version anyway. 
The new features for titling, motion graphics, and more are terrific updates on their own, but Cyberlink has done two more years of upgrades to the core program itself to make it run better since your version was published. One example of this is, the new version has improved support for Intel and AMD CPUs. The program supports more types of video and higher resolution video as well. And remember, your old version of PowerDirector isn't going to be updated or bug fixed anymore. If you own PowerDirector 18 Ultra or Ultimate, the new capabilities in 19 aren't so dramatic that you must upgrade to them. Just remember, you won't be enjoying new features or bug fixes that are available now or those that might come out over the next year. And all that content that Cyberlink puts out on a monthly basis, you don't get that either. If you like the capabilities like titling, transitions, objects, etc., and you want to make more use of them, an upgrade to 19 is the way to go. So now let's talk about what version of PowerDirector 19 would be right for you. If you use a computer that doesn't have consistent access to the Internet, Ultra or Ultimate are the best choice. You need Internet access to get the monthly updates from 365. If you only want a video editor without all the extra updates, maybe Ultra is your choice. Here is a list of what you don't get with Ultra that you do get with Ultimate. You can pause this video to look over the list if you'd like. If those features aren't important to you, Ultra will save you a few bucks on an upgrade. To me, the real value is PowerDirector 365. It costs like, what, $6.67 per month, something like that, and you get PowerDirector Ultimate plus all of these benefits shown on screen. Again, pause the video to look over the list. When I first started editing videos, Ultra would have been just fine for me. But the more I got into using the extras I got through the 365 subscription, the more I really understood the production value and convenience they added to my workflow. I get that some people don't want to rent software. Honestly, I used to be that way myself. I've found that subscription plans like these do allow me to use programs like Adobe Creative Cloud and Microsoft Office that I just couldn't afford to buy. And in the case of PowerDirector, that small monthly fee costs far less than what I'd pay to get all the extra add-ons separately. For example, 365 gives you access to hundreds of thousands of stock video clips, images, and audio files at no extra cost through Shutterstock. Now for me, I pay another service for comparable access to royalty-free content like this. That costs me more than $400 a year. So, for $80 a year, you get the latest version of PowerDirector, you get all the other additional content, and you get royalty-free content that would cost more than $400 per year elsewhere. And as long as you're a subscriber, you never pay for another version upgrade again. When a new version comes out, the application manager simply updates your computer to the latest version. To me, it's a no-brainer. I really am a believer in PowerDirector and the 365 subscription service, and I put my money where my mouth is. Understand, Cyberlink provided me with review copies of PowerDirector 18 and 19, so I didn't have to pay for the program. In spite of that, I pay the full subscription price for 365 each year. The value of the constant updates and new content and royalty-free content, along with Premier Technical Support, it's worth it even though I have the ultimate version of the program at no cost. And I own Sony Vegas, and I have Adobe Premiere Pro as well, but PowerDirector is the program I choose to use because it's fast, easy to learn and use, powerful, and stable. And I pay for the 365 subscription because it just makes my video productions better. If you want to buy PowerDirector, use the link in the description below. When you do, you make it possible for me to make more videos on PowerDirector for you. Speaking of more videos, check out the playlist of PowerDirector tutorials on screen now. Before you go, be sure to hit the Cartoon Jeff icon and subscribe. And I appreciate it if you hit the like button and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching.